Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class. Sorry, I missed last week. I was not keeping too well, so I couldn't make it to class. But um, good to be back, and we will take things forward um, today. Let's um, take a moment to pray. Welcome to all our online students as well. Uh, is everything okay online, video, audio? All, everything's good? Everything's good? Fine. Okay. So let's um, take a moment to pray, and then we will get started. Can somebody please pray with the class, and we'll start. Our dear uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, O Lord Father God, Jesus. We thank you for this day, O Lord Father. We thank you, O Lord Father, for bringing us all uh, together, O Lord Father, to uh, listen to you, O Lord Father, to receive from your spirit, O Lord Father God, Jesus, as we are going forward, O Lord Father, into our classes, O Lord Father, Jesus. We just submit our minds, our hearts, O Lord Father, our entire being into your hands, O Lord Father God, Jesus. Uh, you take control over us, O Lord Father. Help us not to be get distracted, O Lord Father. But help us, O Lord Father, to receive everything that you are sowing into our lives, O Lord Father. Jesus, we pray that whatever you are sowing into our lives, O Lord Father, it will multiply and it will grow, O Lord Father. Jesus, uh, come and have your ways in our lives, Jesus. We just give this time, O Lord Father, into your hands. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So today, um, we are going to move forward. Let me share. If you look at the table of contents, uh, we will look at um, things that we need to go forward with. So we have. Um, Completed to lesson number nine, the Bible is authenticity and accuracy. And we are now moving into lesson number 10. Right? So we're going to spend some time talking about the person of Jesus Christ. So lesson 10, 11, 12, about the Lord Jesus himself and uh, why Jesus uh, are answering some important questions about Jesus, why Jesus is unique, right? Why do we say there is salvation only in Jesus, right? Why do we say that? Uh, and we need to be clear in our minds that Jesus is unique. Why we are saying that? Then we we'll also want to answer a related question about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, how can we be sure uh, that Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago? We were not there. No, we haven't. We are not eyewitnesses. We are not anywhere close to when it happened. Here we are 2,000 years later, and we are saying Jesus rose from the dead. That makes our faith very unique because there is no other faith that claims that their whoever, their founder or important person in that faith rose from the dead. Nobody else claims. And they can all say, look, this is where the person is buried. You can put flowers here. <laughs> but we are the ones who are saying, Jesus rose from the dead. How can you say that when we were not eyewitnesses? So on what basis do we have conviction? Looking with the information that we have, right? Then a little bit uh, about um, salvation in Jesus, how we present that message. And then we want to, in lesson 13 and 14, we want to talk about, so how do we communicate Jesus with some somebody from a Hindu faith and somebody from a Muslim faith? I just share some thoughts. Now, you may have covered some of this in a uh, first year course on lifestyle evangelism, right? So you may have covered some of it, but it's good just to uh, refresh ourselves in that. Then, so that's one section that we're focusing on Jesus and our faith in Jesus and how we communicate that faith uh, to two of the world's biggest 
religions. How do we people from that? Then we move to other things. Like we will talk about um, suffering. We'll talk about different social issues. Uh, the questions of many different issues. We'll, we'll address that very quickly. And then we'll just have uh, some time for open questions, if there are any. Right. So let's go um, to lesson number 10, the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. So first of all, we must uh, recognize that the historicity of Christ is uh, uh, indisputable. Right? The very fact that uh, all of human history uh, is centered around this person, you know, before Christ and after his death, right? Now, of course, people have uh, in, uh, you know, re uh, maybe the last 20 years, they've tried to change that and say, you know, before the common era and after the common era, they try to change it a bit. And so some of the modern uh, work, literary works, in terms of using uh, AD and BC, they will use BC and uh, 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 before the common era, so BCE, and I'm not sure what else they use, the uh, common era, or CE, common era. So they kind of just changed that a bit. But up until, you know, maybe 20 years ago, the way history was divided was around the person of Jesus Christ himself, right? His life and his death. And uh, uh, historians living in that time record the historicity of Christ. And there was this man who lived and who did all these things, right? And these are non non biblical, right? Outside of the Bible, right? So um, nobody can say, "Hey, Jesus, just a story." Not just a story. He's a histor. He was there in history, right? Historically, it's been recorded. And I mentioned a few on in our notes here. There, there are of course there are many more. Um, uh, at least 19 ancient sources, historical sources that refer to Jesus Christ as a real person. So the historicity of Jesus is proven. It is indisputable, cannot be questioned. There was this person who lived Jesus Christ. Now, the question we have to answer is, why is Jesus absolutely unique? Oh, yeah, there have been other religious leaders. And even today, there are many, you know, religious leaders who come up, start some new religion or some new uh, movement, all kinds of things are happening all the time. You know, new ideas, new things. And of course, today, uh, uh, they, so people may be very influential and have big following if they are, uh, example, good coaches. You know, there are some very famous coaches, life coaches, they'll tell you how to live life, you know, motivational thing, kind of, and they'll have huge followers, or, or, or people could be influential if they are, you know, uh, very famous actors and so on and so forth, so they form their own thing, or sometimes they're TV personalities, you know, they, they have a TV show, which is global, all over the world, people are listening to them, and then they begin to influence people in so many ways, so we have so many different kinds of uh, people these days. Going back in time, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ. Why is he so different? Why is he so unique? Right? What makes Jesus unique? So we want to, um, I've, I've listed this out in um, nine points. And um, I want us to keep this in mind so that depending on who you're speaking to, you can present a few of these. I'm not saying for every person, listen to me, I'll give you nine points. No, it's not like that. Depending on who you're speaking to, right? One or more of these points of differentiation will be important. Okay. But just keep keep that in mind, right? So um, number one is Christ's claim for himself. See, there are many leaders or religious leaders who will not dare to make these kind of claims for themselves. They'll say, I will teach you how to be good. You be good. You do good. You live life like that. I will just tell you. But they won't have the courage to claim for themselves something unique. Right? See, it takes a lot of courage. Either you're lunatic, 
to say, I am the greatest. Suppose, suppose somebody says, I am the greatest. So, hey, something is wrong. He is gone. <laughs> For somebody to stand up and say, I am the great. Or, he is genuine. Because people in between will not say that. Right? Those who are normal, like day to day people, ordinary people. We, none of us will say, I am the greatest. No. Or, I am so different, I am so unique. So to, for somebody to stand up and make certain claims, either they are they're totally gone or they're very something we have to take them very seriously. Right? So think about some of the claims Jesus made for himself. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Before Abraham was, I am. Uh, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the truth. I mean, these are not simple statements. For somebody to say, I am the way. I am the door. You cannot go in except you come through me. That's a big, big claim. Say, I'm the only, I'm the door. If you want to go to God, you have to pass it, come through me. Today you have many religious leaders. But nobody will say, I am the door. You can only go through me. They won't have the courage to say that. They may say a lot of good things, how to live good life, etc., etc. But to say, I am the door, I am the way, I am the good shepherd. That's a very big claim. So either his claim was true, or either he was, he was a madman. Gone. You can't, you can't, you can't put him in the middle where all of us are, the day-to-day -day ordinary people. Right? Or if you think about some of the big claims after his resurrection, he's saying, I am alive. I am the one who died, and I have rose, risen up again. Hey, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the root and offspring of David. You know? So he, the resurrected Jesus is speaking you know, to people, to so John, to Paul, to Ananias. So all these people, I am, this is who I am. And when he comes to Thomas, Thomas, touch me, see my hands. I am the one who was died on the cross. I am alive, that same Jesus. And I'm not one carbon copy. I'm not somebody else. I am the same Jesus. It's a very big claim. Right? So, we have to think about that. Somebody who made these kinds of claims, either we take him seriously, and if we take him seriously, you take everything he said seriously. Or we have to reject him completely. No, no. He was a madman. People simply followed him. God, finish. Reject everything. We can't say, ah, he's a good teacher. He's a good teacher. But the same teacher said all these things. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. So if you want his teachings, you take, if you take all of his teachings, just don't take a few things. Ah, he said some nice things. No. If you really believe, you have to believe everything of what he said. And these are the claims. Right, so we have to think about that, you know. So, for some people, um, this may be a valid point, very simple, very logical. This is what he claims. You like his, you like his teaching, very good. You like the things he taught, very good. But the same person also said these things. So you either accept everything he said, or you have to reject. You can't be in between. Somehow. Right? So the same Jesus, like we said, he claimed his uh, uh, pre-existence. He said, you know, uh, that, yeah, uh, before Abraham was, I am, in John chapter 8. This is on page uh, 61. Before Abraham was, I am. He said, I and my father are one. 
you know. So these are very big claims. And he also spoke about his pre-existence. He says, Father, glorify me with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So he's, he's saying, I was with you there even before anything was created. So pre-existence. So these are all he, he claimed. Second is, so uh, to our knowledge, no other man, no other spiritual leader, no other religious leader has made such claims. Nobody else can dare say this. Nobody else said, hey, before the world was, I came. I was there. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody has dared to claim that. If anybody has claimed, they put them in mental asylum. <laughs> Finish locked. <laughs> Finish. They said this person is really good. But something different with Jesus. Secondly, what the Bible itself says about Jesus. So first, what he claimed. Second, the rest of the Bible. The Bible is, what does the Bible claim about the deity of Christ? The Bible itself is telling us that he is God. You know? John 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was... The Word was God. He was with God. You know, and through Him everything was made. Philippians 2, in the beginning He was in the form of God. That means He was in the likeness of God. He had all the attributes of deity. Okay. So he was not a created being, but He was a being who had everything of God. All the attributes of God. So, the Bible presents Jesus as deity. And I've, I've, made, I've listed other references here on the top of page 62, where you can see very clearly that Jesus is referred to as God. So, there is example, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, and some other, you know, what we would refer to as cults, who do not believe in the deity of Christ. They will call themselves Christians. They'll say, who are you Christian? I'm Christian. But if you look further, they don't believe in the deity of Christ. So to be careful. Ah, some people don't. Yeah. Right? So to be careful. Because on the, on the surface, if you ask, are you Christian? Yeah, I'm Christian. Do you believe? In Jesus? Yeah, I believe in Jesus. But what do you believe about Jesus? Jehovah's Witness, they believe Jesus was a created being like Lucifer, like Lucifer's counterpart. So that is very wrong. So you ask, you believe, are you a Christian? Yes. You believe in Jesus? Yes. What do you believe about Jesus? God. Okay. So we have to be careful. So, for when we are talking to example, if you, if, if you run into Jehovah's Witnesses, you have to remember these scriptures. Because that is the main point of difference. They say Jesus is not God. He's a created being. But look at all these scriptures. These scriptures are referring to him as the mighty God. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6. He is the mighty God. Micah 5, 2, before, from everlasting to everlasting, from everlasting, your God. So, okay, so, hey, this is uh, Jesus. The Bible is talking about Jesus, referring to him as mighty God, referring to him as the one who created everything. Right? So, so the Bible, when the Bible presents Jesus, the Bible is presenting him as God. Okay, this is important because most of the world, they hear the term son of God, son of Mary. Christmas, everybody knows what happened. Jesus was born. Who is he? Son of Mary. Sure, that is true. Not wrong, right? He was born through Mary. But they're only looking at his humanity. Son of Mary is born. Bethlehem, he was born. Merry Christmas. But the same Bible is telling us this 
is the mighty God. He was with God. He created everything. He became man. But that part people don't hear or they don't know. They ignore it. So, why is Jesus unique? Because when the Bible is presenting Jesus, it's presenting God who became man. Nobody else. No. So we have a lot of leader, religious leaders. Example, I'm just comparing. If you compare Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, he didn't say, I am God. The Quran is not saying, is not saying, this is God who became man. No, he's a prophet. Or any other. But this Jesus is God who became man. Or any other religious leader, the leader of any movement. You know, We have so many people today. They have great followers, many following. Uh, but they don't say, I'm God. Or their, their writings will not say, this person is God who became man. In fact, for most people, they're trying to say, this is man who's trying to become God. Man who's trying to become God. He's trying, he, he gained some enlightenment. He gained, he's become higher than us, became. But this is other way. God who became man. Just think about it. This is who Jesus is. Can we find someone else like this? Third. So, when the Bible is presenting Jesus to us, the Bible not only presents him as God, but the Bible is also saying there is nobody else. Nobody else. The Bible is not saying this is God who became man and God came also many other times. The Bible is very clear. Example, Acts 4.12. There is no salvation in any other, for there is no other name, no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Very clear. No salvation in anyone else, it's only in this person. So today you will have lots of writings by religious leaders. They'll say, okay, there are many ways to God. You try anyone. Bible is not saying that. Bible is saying there's only one way. There is no salvation in any other. So either we have to we the opt or the choice is either we accept this or we reject it. Either you follow Jesus or you don't. Same thing in Timothy, Paul writes, he says, There is one God and one mediator. Between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, one mediate, not many, just one. So the Bible is presenting Jesus as unique. So this is the answer. So the Bible is not saying he's one of the answers. You'll get some answers before and you'll get some answers later. No, this is the answer. The only answer. So either we accept or we have to say, okay, I don't believe. Fine. No middle ground. So that's another thing we can present. Now, you know, this is very important because um, we have to learn to say this and we have to learn to say it in love. There were in, in recent times, when I say the recent times, the last maybe last decade, last two decades, um, you know, public media would like to interview, you know, religious uh, Christian leaders. And so uh, they would ask, you know, what, 
Do you believe Jesus is the only way? They'll ask publicly right, on on you know, global on, I was global television. Everybody's listening. And in some cases, it's been sad that these are Christian leaders, top Christian leaders. When they are asked, "Do you do you say that Jesus is the only way?" They will avoid the question. Say something else. Instead of saying, yes, the Bible says. I'll just quote one or two verses. This is what the Bible says. But they just avoid. Why? Because if you say Jesus is the only way, then some people will love you and many people will hate you. <laughs> You're on public television, right? So they want to be, you know, what politically politically correct. They want to just not. But then that is uh, not saying the truth. Right? The truth is the Bible says Jesus is the only way. Our message is Jesus is the only way. So as leaders, we have to say that, right? We have to say it in love, say it poli politely. Of course, we are not trying to be uh, arrogant. Uh, we are not trying to say we are better than you. No. You ask me the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Finish. I'll say it gently, say it lovingly. So a lot of controversies broke out because, hey, you're, so, you're a Christian leader. You had a chance to you know, say this, and you're being asked on television, and you didn't say it. And so all those issues. But anyway, so we need to be absolutely convinced and speak the truth in love. Number four. The incarnation and words and birth of Christ. So this is very important. Again, is what makes Jesus unique. So like we said, the Bible is presenting Jesus as God. And the Bible is presenting Jesus as God who became man. And he was born through a virgin birth. I want you to think about this. That this thought, just the thought of a virgin giving birth is, is not normal. It's not normal. So even, it's not just no, not normal for our time. Because science, today, okay, yeah, we know so much science, we know all the, we know biology, medicine, all that we know. But even... 2,000 years ago, it was not normal. Nobody can will think, oh, or let's say go back to Isaiah's time, 2,700 years ago, when Isaiah was prophesied. Even in Isaiah's time, it is not a normal thing. It is not like everywhere, everywhere else you're seeing some virgins giving birth. No, no. So no, it is it is no it is not thought of. And Isaiah is prophesied. A virgin will give birth, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Oh. So it's very unique. Very unique. Even that time and even now. Very unique. So no other religious leader can claim that. On my birth certificate, I have only mother's name. <laughs> I'm just joking, but you know. So I have only mother, no father. I'm just joking. But nobody else can claim that. That I was born by the supernatural power of God. Nobody. But on the spiritual side, this is also very important. Very important. Because, uh, and we can summarize it like this, that, uh, you know, um, if you understand it like this, Adam put us in subjection to sin, Satan, death. So every human being born from Adam, 
was born under sin, under Satan, in subjection to death. Every human being, man and woman, born under that. So to redeem us, somebody had must be born who is not subject to sin, Satan and death. But he has to be a human being. Because one human being put us under, only a human being can put us out. But that human being must not be subject to sin, Satan, death. How is that possible? Only way for God to become man. So when God becomes man, this man will not be subject to sin, Satan, death. And this man can pull us out. So that is Jesus. So the virgin birth is very important. Because this man was sinless. Born by the power of God. Not through the natural human race. He's a human being. But different. God became man. And uh, he, is, he was conceived by the power of God. So that's why Jesus is unique. That's why the virgin birth is very important. So sometimes even today, even Christians. Are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. You believe in the virgin birth. Ah, that was just a story, just a Christmas story. No, 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 it's not a Christmas story. It is very important. Very important. Because without that, Jesus would not be qualified to redeem us. He would be like everybody else, born under sin, Satan and death. So the virgin birth is very important. It is because God, by His power, caused that conception and then the human body to be formed. It was God by His power doing it, not just... Uh, so very important. It's not just a Christmas story. An angel came. Or, no, no. <laughs> very important, the virgin birth. It's what makes Jesus unique. It what's what makes him qualified to be our Redeemer, our Savior. So, we can extend this thought a little bit. And again, we have to be careful how we share this. Okay. So, I have to share it very lovingly. And this is especially relevant when you're speaking to people from... Hinduism, Hindu background. Why? Because they also have the concept or the idea of God becoming man. Right? So they call avatar. Avatar is God came in human form. So they also have the concept. Okay. Almost same. We are saying incarnation, they are saying avatar. Saying God became man, yeah, for us also, God's one of the gods became human. Avatar. Then we have to very gently, we have to think through, okay, fine, let us think about this. The difference is in Hindu philosophy, God came 11 times. 11. Huh? Ah, avatars, avatar. So they have, I think, Correctly, if I remember, at least 11 avatars. We are saying only one incarnation. Okay, let us think about this, right? Of course, we have to think about it. I mean, we, 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 we just share this lovingly, but. So the point is this why 11 times? Does that mean the previous 10 times were failure? If the previous 10 times were failure, that means previous 10 times was not God. Because God cannot fail. He shouldn't fail, otherwise He's not God. And what guarantees 11th time He succeeded? We don't know. See? But what we are saying is, in the Incarnation, there was a one complete, perfect 
absolute work it was done why because this was god who became man he cannot fail god cannot fail he came he finished the work offered the free gift of self he rose up from the dead offered one one time only one time and he did it for every human being is not like for chinese we have to one chinese god for each continent it's not like god if god created all the people and one one time is enough so again we're not trying to be rude we're just saying let us think about this right so that's why the incarnation and the virgin birth of jesus is very unique also very important it's not just some other man now this is god who became man and in one one incarnation he finished the work work is finished he rose up and back so that is the difference between the incarnation and the avatars in hinduism yeah number 5 his life work teaching an impact on history so why is jesus so unique when he said well okay let us think about this jesus lived 2000 years ago long time 2000 years ago there were other philosophers who lived in fact even before jesus say socrates aristotle uh plato they're all 300 years before jesus they lived around the same place they lived in so there were many philosophers many th thinkers many jesus his life was so simple and so short he never did anything big meaning he never wrote a book he never formed an organization he he was not part of some big religious system like these philosophers they were part of you know the, the you know what we call as the university of their day they were recognized philosophers jesus was not there. just a simple carpenter and he actually did his work only for 3 years the others for the whole lifetime for all lifetime they did what they did she is only did 3 years just 3 years very simple so you think okay if there was anybody who should have become unknown very fast it would have been jesus if there was any person who had to become unknown compared to all these uh, you know philosophers leaders other any was jesus must have been the first one to be oh we don't know anything about him only 3 years he never wrote a book never did anything big not part of any big system nothing he was just want walking here and there like a carpenter uh, you know that's how very simple so if, if there was anyone who should have just been forgotten by history it should have been jesus is he really never did anything big in the sense of uh that could have made his name last never he never even built one house house of jesus nothing <laughs> nothing but all so many famous people before him after him lived today those names are almost not known those names are almost not known nobody goes you know church of socrates <laughs> church of plato nobody formed nothing not even one but they are they were some you know they were part of big things in those times even before jesus 
Nobody remembers. But today, if you look at Jesus, look at the Christian faith. It is, uh, it is like no, not, nothing else. No. Even in our day, people become famous, but they are forgotten very quickly. You know, even given with all the technology we have, with all the means we have, people become famous. The example, musicians, or uh, yeah, or uh, movie stars, whatever. So many politicians. So, so many. They can, they have all the means. You know, you can write books, you can produce movies, you can do. They have all the means, but they are very quickly forgotten. Nobody knows. But Jesus, it's just increasing. So we say something is very different. Can we point to any other person in history who's had such a big influence and continues to have such a big influence on human life? Yeah. And he never wrote a book, never sang a song, never <laughs> a thing. Just three simple years. That means, and there are, the thing is, many people have tried to erase his name. They tried, destroy the Bible, destroy churches, destroy believers. Try. Nothing. No one succeeds, it's only increasing. Even in communist countries, you know, in, in parts of the world where they have eradicated or they've tried to remove religion completely, in those places you have strong believers in Jesus. So that means there's something very different, something very unique. There is the Spirit of God at work in you know in the name of Jesus and even some of uh, his biggest uh, critics you find they come they eventually come to faith in Christ okay. so let's just do a few more uh, number six or let's yeah his sacrificial death uh, it's again very unique because No one else said that their greatest work would be done in their death. Whereas for Jesus, his greatest work was done through his death. Yes, he did many things before that. He healed the sick, he cast out de devils, he worked miracles. He did all those things. That is, greatest work is in his death on the cross. Nobody else said that or even did that. That in my death is my greatest work, salvation. And through my death, I'm giving salvation. No. But it's something very different, very unique. And his death was, uh, I mentioned these things here, bottom of page 65. His death was substitutionary, atoning, complete, triumphant, transforming. It's, it's, it's very, you can, you know, you can elaborate on all of these thoughts. Number seven is the resurrection of Christ. Again here, this is so unique that uh, Christianity, is alive because Christ is alive. Yeah, and Paul writes, he says, if Christ was dead, our faith is useless. If Christ died and didn't rise from the dead, then our faith is useless, no point. No. But because he's risen from the dead, our faith has meaning, our faith is real. Okay. 
to the resurrection of Christ. We, we point out. We'll talk more about that in the next lesson. But this is very unique. This is what makes Jesus very different. That we are saying, hey, he died, but he also rose up after three days. He rose up. That is very important for our faith. And if he did not rise up, our faith is useless. We are acknowledging that. So we are not following a dead religion. We are not following a dead person. We are following a living Christ. Number eight, that salvation is given through simple faith in Christ. That means the Bible is saying you believe in Jesus because he made the full provision. You believe in him, you'll have salvation. Very different. As we will see later on. For the, in Hinduism, in contrast, it is based on works. You do good works then you'll have salvation. In contrast, Jesus says, I finished the work, you just believe. And you follow me. It'll be taken, salvation. Islam, we don't know. Meaning, if Allah says, okay, if Allah is happy with me, I will have salvation. So till the end, I don't know. I will do what I can. I'll follow Islam. And maybe I may even try to give my life as a martyr. You know, uh, in jihad or whatever, you sacrifice. I try, try even that. But ultimately, I don't know. Allah will decide. So there it is a question mark. In Hinduism, it is, you have to work. But Jesus is saying, I did the work for you. I'm giving you salvation. You can know that you have passed from death to life. You can know. Very different. The last point is that today, Jesus changes our lives. He works in our Lives. He's saying, I will come to you, I will come in you by my spirit, and we are being changed by his spirit. So he's working in us. Which again is very different because um, in so many other philosophies, it is more of this is how you can change yourself. We will tell you, do these things. But Jesus says, I will work in you. I will make you a new creation. I will transform you. So, we have these nine thoughts that we can present. And so in the end, either Jesus was a liar, just simply said all this. Or like we said, maybe he was a lunatic, mad person, that he could claim all this. Or he was a legend, extraordinary person, or he was Lord. Let to choose. Right? And yeah. if he is Lord, and we, what we are saying is because he is truly God, all these things have happened. Okay? So let's go for a break, and after break, um, think about these things. We'll take up questions. I know we don't have time for questions right now. But right after the break, we'll take any questions on these uh, these nine points, and then we'll go forward. Okay? See you in 10 minutes. Thank you.